Hi, everyone. This is Rob Doggett from the State University of Newark at Geneseo and on behalf of the International Yates Society. And we're doing another Yates conversation. This is a new um, type of conversation where I'm speaking with uh, translators, people who have translated Yates. And I'm here today with uh, Sally Hussein. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you. Yeah, thank you very much. You. It's the morning here. It's the afternoon over in Iran. Um, uh, and it's it's great that we're, we're getting a chance to do this. I was doing a webinar in Iran and you were an honored guest. And it, during the questions, you mentioned your translation of uh, The Second Coming. And I looked I looked you up and I saw that you, um, you know, you've been back in Iran. You've been in Iran trans, uh, working since uh, 1979. You're currently teaching at, at Jihad. Um, and you were awarded Translator of the Year in 1997. Um, and I couldn't believe how many um, really important works you've translated into Persian. Uh, 1984, Brave New World, To the Lighthouse, Heart of Darkness, and, and The Sound and, and the Fury are among many others. So I thought, wouldn't Sorry. it be great to speak with someone who's done so much translation of Thank modernist you. works into Persian? Um, and so we're going to talk today about... Um, the second coming. Um, but before we do that, I, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about, um, just a little bit about your background in translation and maybe comparing um, your experiences of translating Yates um, with other modernists. Uh, were there were there some unique challenges in, in translating Yates? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, I have done almost uh, prose, as you have seen you know, in my uh, a list of translations. Uh, well, my experience in translating uh, poetry is limited to uh, just this second coming. Uh, well, earlier uh, I have done that time of year by Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could do it because uh, uh, my age somehow uh, uh, made it somehow possible you know, for me to mm -hmm. translate that. <clears throat> Uh, then I have done Tiger, Tiger by uh -huh. William Blake because I uh, very much loved you know, the rhythm of that uh, poem. It's, uh, somehow uh, uh, the rhythm was like uh, the rhythm in our own poetry. Tiger, Tiger burning bright in the forest of the night. It was wonderful. Um, then uh, um, uh, uh, I did also in a station of Metro by Ezra Pound uh, because it was uh, when I was... Uh, uh, Translating the Great Code, the Bible and Literature by uh, Notre Fry. Right. Uh, you know, this poem, you know, was over there, and I had to translate it. That uh, it took me a long time you know, to translate that. Uh, then also, when I was translating God on Moses, uh, the spiritual uh, from which uh, uh, Faulkner had taken this uh, title, I translated all of that uh, spiritual. It was very hard, but you know, I did I did my best, you know, to do to do it in mm -hmm. in Farsi. Uh, then also in Godon Moses, uh, when uh, the grandmother uh, of the kid uh, uh, that's killed with his uh, with her brother, you know, they are sitting and they are making some lament over the over the uh, mm -hmm. lost son. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's dead. Pharaoh got him. Oh yes, Lord, Pharaoh got him. You know, I. Uh, somehow try to do to do that according to the lamentations that goes on in my own country. Mm. Uh, so these these are all have been in all my experiences in uh, in teaching poetry. And the reason is that uh, from the very beginning uh, 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 it has it came to my mind that really translating poetry is uh, somehow impossible, mm. and in so many cases very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 because of the uh, phonic uh, qualities, rhyme, rhythm, use of ambiguity. Now, I uh, can give you an example. Uh, uh, take this from Shakespeare in Cleopatra. Come thou mortal wretch, uh, with thy sharp teeth is not intrinsic of life. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 well, uh, here uh, uh, we can see that, you know, for example, mortal and wretch. Uh, uh, has ambiguity and it can be translated into any other language. Mm -hmm. uh, now, intrinsic is the combination of two words, intricate and intrinsic, and we don't have such a thing in Farsi. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I see. I see. So, so it is really impossible, you know, to uh, turn that into Farsi. <clears throat> Again, uh, let me give an example from Hafez. Uh, now, here is a translation from uh, a guy uh, whose name is Wilbur Wilberforce Clark. It says to toppers thirsty of uh, 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 lip, none gives a little water. Thou may say, thou holy, uh, those holy men have departed from this land. This is completely wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Because topper, uh, which is the translation of rend in half is, uh, whether it's, it's something like rich, for example, in, in Shakespeare. You know, mm. uh, uh, or some of the words like uh, like ceremony, like uh, say ceremony of innocence in Yeats, mm -hmm. uh, it can be translated really uh, into any other language because it carries an awful lot of meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so this rent, um, uh, which has been translated as uh, in into topper, uh, uh, besides any other uh, all, all other meanings, you know. It, it, uh, the, the, the uh, literal meaning is rogue, but mm -hmm. Hafez gives it some uh, uh, connotations. One connotation is that, you know, uh, this rogue or rent is the uh, friend of God, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, when he says those holy men, you know, it's not uh, those holy men, you know, doesn't refer you know, to the toppers, you know, that he says. Uh, anyway. Uh, I wonder too about the, the the sound qualities as well. That's I was I, I remember thinking about this when I was um, I had a fantastic teacher of Dante, and I've worked with a colleague named Ron Herzman at my school, who's also an amazing Dante scholar. And we've talked a bit about um, uh -huh. about translations of Dante, and to just on a basic level, and it's something I talk with my students about. Terza Rima is a lot easier in Italian with all the words, all these words ending in vowels. In English, right. Terza Rima is so difficult. And I wonder that if right. if there's there's the same in English and, and translating into Farsi, are there um are there difficulties with the sound qualities that you have to wrestle exactly. with? Exactly. You know, the sound quality is very important. You're in this, uh, uh, you can't you can't translate it, you can't actually transfer that into any other language. Mm -hmm. It's just a special to that language, mm -hmm. particular to that language, and you can you can't turn it into any other language. For example, well, I don't know Spanish, but uh, this uh, poem. Let me see if I, if I can remember it. The, the heist of Machu Picchu. I don't know if I, you are familiar with that by mm. uh, uh, so. Pablo Neruda. By Pablo Neruda. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, yes. Okay. Yeah, Pablo Neruda. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, in English translation, the beginning is from. Uh, Air to air, right? Well, in in Farsi, it's been translated as to from hava to hava, but over there it is lere, the lere. Do you see you know, mm -hmm. that musicality can be translated to another language? Do you Very see? Sounds, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, even even you know, I did have you know that same experience when I was translating the so-called lyrical novels, for example, to the lighthouse. When I was translating to the lighthouse, I really had. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, at uh, uh, going on it, you know, well, hard going on it. Yeah, a novel <laughs> that depends a lot on some moments of incredibly beautiful um, yeah. quality. Yeah. Yes. yeah, for example, in Time Passes, when it, it says, passes, yeah. yeah, moreover, softened than acquiescent the spring uh, with her bees humming and gnats dancing, you know, through her clock and all around her vest veiled her eyes, averted her head. And among passing shadows and flights of small rain, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, seem to have taken upon her a knowledge of the sorrows of mankind. You see, mm -hmm. well, <clears throat> I had to challenge with that, you know, uh, phonetic uh, qualities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, and I, I I think you know I have been a little bit successful in doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's let's talk about the the poem, um, the second comic, right. and. I imagine it was it was a challenge to translate. It's such a it's such a famous poem, and it has so many uh, lines right. that are often quoted these days. But it but I don't think people who quote the lines often look at the entire poem, and the entire poem is 
strange and complicated. Yeah, it is. It is. It's really complicated. Um, yeah. But here's the poem. I, let's, I'll read it in English. I never get to read the poems of these things. So I'll read it in English. And then if you can read your translation. Sure, I sure will. People to, to be able to hear it. So oh, we'll start okay. with okay. the poem in English here, The Second Coming. All right. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle, and what rough beast its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. Um, it's such a remarkable poem, and it's it sure is. And it's, sure it's, it's we, we hear we it's hear it so often, and uh, yeah. and it's it's a rare poem that even if you you hear it over and over again, it's still striking. And part of what's yeah, striking sure. about it is the is the sound quality. So I'm curious to hear how your translation sounds, even though I don't speak the language. <laughs> okay, you know I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, see, I, I uh, it's on those uh, uh, sound qualities in Farsi that I have tried, you know, to uh, somehow match with those uh, 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 phonetic qualities or sound qualities in the in the original. Okay. Of course, not the same, but I have tried, you know, to do some other way, you know, to be uh, somehow uh, the same in a sense. Masiha, that's the the uh, title. Masiha Mia. Masiha is Messiah. All right, but we, we pronounce it as Masiha. 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 Char Charfan Dar Kalaf Gosha Yande Seda Ye Bashe Ra Nemi Shenavat Seda Ye Bashe Baz Ra Nemi Shenavat Bashe Gardun as Gardun Dara Made. مرکز دیگر قوام ندارد سر به سر آشوب بر عالم آدم پنجه گشوده و از کران تا طوفان خونالود انان گسسته است و از کران تا کران حلال یا طلبی خود بهل شده است خوجستگان توهی از اعتقادند و گجستگان سرشار از شور و شرر <تصفيق> به یقین آیتی از پرده غیب پدیدار می شود به یقین مسیح ها می آید ظهور مسیح ها کلما این کلمات برون نی آمده از دهان هنوز که تمثال تناوری از جان جهان برمی آشو بعد نگاه من و جاین در شن بیابان هیئتی شیر کال بد و آدمی سر با نگاهی خیره و بی امان چون خورشید رانهایش را می جنباند آرام و رام و گرد بر گردش سایه مرغان رمیده بیابان تاب می خورد تاریکی از نوباز فرو می افتد اما حالا میدانم دیگر که بیست صده خواب سنگی را گهواره جنبان به کابوس رهنمون شده بود و کدام این دد سبع زمان ظهور در رسید به عاقبت رو به بیت لح می نهد که زاده شود uh -huh. yeah. I could hear a rhythm. It's, 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 I mean, 
it's hard to tell when a, you know not knowing the language but it's i could hear rhythm running throughout and it's interesting i i yeah what, what were the what were the kinds of sound qualities that you wanted to emphasize and were there were there yes, from the yes. english were, were there differences because the english meter you know they lends itself to certain kinds of um metrical forms and i'm wondering if that's you right yeah were that's right that. sure. yeah right that's right yeah Actually, you know, I emphasize, you know, the C sound, T sound, and sh sound, you know, in my translation. Okay, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, can, can you talk, and, and you, you mentioned a little bit at the outset, the, the title, and you said... Um, yeah, that's it, yeah. Mes mm -hmm. You referred to Messiah. Yeah, that's Messiah, yeah, Messiah cometh. The Messiah cometh. Cometh, huh. yeah, cometh. All right. Yeah, uh, that, yeah the title actually... Uh, I did, uh, you know, I, it came to my mind, Messiah cometh, you know, I said somehow in the vein of the Lord cometh, which uh, occurs so much in, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, uh, well, uh, we say, uh, 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 as I told you, when we say Messiah, it's pretty close to your Messiah. But we also use uh, a Messiah, Messiah, which is a translation of Christ. I see. You see, uh, and it means anointed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, Messi means anointed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the same sense, for example, that uh, uh, Hebrew prophets, you know, were mm -hmm. anointed mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the same sense that in um, Isaiah uh, 45, 1, Cyrus is also uh, mm -hmm. anoint, mm -hmm. anointed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He is also he is also Messi, as we say. Because Messi is, an, Messi is an Arabic word. I see. All right. Uh, now, Messiah is used, uh, especially in the realm of uh, when we say Messiah or Messiha, it is uh, especially used in the realm, realm of poetry. Mm -hmm. For example, in Hafiz, uh, uh, to ascribe him the power of healing and raising the dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Moreover, Messiah in the mind of uh, Shiite Muslims. Uh, are you familiar with this term Shiite? The, the Shiite, yes, Shiite, yes, 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 Shiite, Shiite, Shiite Muslims. Yes, you know they, yes, they yes, believe yes. in twelve. In, they believe in twelve imams and all. Right. Yes. Yes. I'm familiar. Uh, and and the last one's name is Mehdi. Is somehow like Messiah. I see. Uh, well, the Shiite in the mind of Shiite Muslim is connected with Mehdi, the twelfth Imam. Okay? okay. Who who appears at the end of time and saves mankind? I see. Well, yes. how, however, however, with a bit of difference. Uh, because Mehdi, before disappearing, appears four times to his disciples. Okay. But as we know, uh, 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 Jesus Christ just appears once, you know, to uh, when in this world, you know, to two of his uh, disciples in mm -hmm. Emmaus, mm -hmm. and uh, it is expressed so beautifully uh, by T.S. Eliot in, in the Wasteland, who is the yes. third who come, who walks all right. the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, well, now this four times uh, is called uh, in, in our term uh, lesser occult, and then when he disappears, it's called greater occult. Okay, which means you know this, this disappearance. Well, but his uh, ever presence is felt by devout Shiite Muslims. Okay, uh, well as I have said through, uh, uh, as I have said, it's uh, the same in, in Christianity. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, if I wanted to translate uh, verbatim, you know, the second coming verbatim, I'd have, you know, to give a lengthy explanation in, in footnotes. So in, in, in order to have with footnotes, you know, I just said Messiah is Messiah cometh. Okay. You see, that was the reason why I, uh, I uh, actually chose that uh, I see. title. And that would have resonated with people. It would have had some of the same. That's, that's right. Without exactly. having to explain the Christian detailed exactly. complexities exactly. of the second that is, yes that is right that, that, is. that makes sense um uh and then so in the in the first stanza i was thinking um of some of the trickier more difficult moments in that stanza and you mentioned it yourself the word um the word ceremony and that that phrase ceremony of innocence i mm. spend a lot of time with my students on that phrase um mm -hmm. And for them, ceremony tends to be associated with religion um, or with 
sort of um oh the, you know kings and, and queens and yeah and, that's right mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yates of course has also ideas about um the aristocracy and tradition and a kind of nobility of self um that's right that's artifice right. of the self and then so so it's a, i imagine it's a difficult it's a difficult word in the poem to sure. interpret and i imagine as you're translating it's very difficult to think what so in Farsi, in the word like ceremony, I'm wondering what the connotations would have been uh, if yeah. you had done a literal Perfect. translation versus you, what you decided. No, no, no. I, I, I you know, the, the literal translation wouldn't do, verbatim wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, I went, uh, actually, I made an awful lot of search, you know, for uh, the ceremony of innocence. And um, uh, as you know, in my uh, prayer for my daughter, you know, he uh, again, you know, we do have these two right, words right, because right, right. Uh, they, they are not coming together. And then uh, in the verb uh, the penultimate uh, line, he says that the ceremony is a name for the rich horn or horn rich of horn, uh, yeah. plenty, right? That's right. Well, uh, that, that, that with that, you know, I couldn't do anything, you know, in, in Farsi. <laughs> uh, do you see? And then uh, uh, I went to uh, even to uh, uh, the, this guy whose name I. Uh, forget uh, all the time, um, Harold Bloom. Oh, Harold, Harold Bloom sure. has, uh, yeah, has a wonderful... Uh, Hard to forget uh, his name for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. W wonderful analysis of this poem, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, his, in his book, which is called Yates. Yeah. Over there, of course, you know, he, he, he does give you a uh, kind of explanation, which I don't like, it's really. Uh, Fair enough. I, 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 well, I try, you know, to uh, just stick to this idea that he's really just talking about the second comic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it's not the apocalypse of uh, uh, Blake or or, or Shelley or, 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 you know, or uh, well over there he was uh, telling that you know the this uh, uh, entertainment of Falconer Falconer you know is kind of uh, mm -hmm. actually uh, ceremony Falconer, yeah, because yeah. it has been for for the entertainment of the ruling class right well that right. is that is a ceremony again you know I couldn't do anything with that mm -hmm. now in the uh, uh, in the meantime, of, of or, or in the process of my endeavor, you know, to find something, you know, in order to uh, put it into Farsi. Uh, uh, well, let me, uh, before that, I say, you know, in Farsi, again, you know, for ceremony, we have some, at least six or five uh, equivalents. But none of those equivalents, again, you know, could do anything. You know, I, I, I couldn't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. you know? It didn't help me because when I put it with uh, innocence, you know, it, it, it didn't mean anything. At, well, at that's all. exactly in, in right. Farsi, it's so yeah, strange. That's right. Yeah, that yeah. in English yeah. it's strange to have a yeah, ceremony right. of innocence. Yes, well, and that... now, yeah, yeah. In the meantime, you know, one of my uh, friends, you know, my really uh, believe in uh, uh, in his capacity and his knowledge, uh, uh, had made a connection with the uh, Yates Foundation, mm -hmm. and over there they had told him that you know in um, um, ancient Ireland there had been a kind of uh, uh, a custom. Uh, or kind of you know, ritualistic uh, uh, a custom that when a person uh, uh, was in the verge of death, okay, uh, the uh, relatives, you know, went to him and they all told him that, you know, uh, we have forgiven you. Okay. I don't, I don't know that one. Okay. Well, uh, well, that's what he, what he told Interesting. me. And yeah. then I, well, El, I, I, I found this very actually, uh, uh, um, somehow uh, fit, you know, to my purpose because we do have uh, that kind of uh, um, actually custom in our country, uh -huh. Uh -huh. or or used to have that kind, but in a reverse order. How uh, when people, you know, wanted to go to the Hajj pilgrimage? Okay, yes, yes, the pilgrimage. Sure. Yeah, the, to the Hajj pilgrimage, uh -huh. to the Makkah yes. Makkah pilgrimage. Yes. yes. Uh, Okay, it took some six or seven months, you know, for people, you know, to go and come back. Mm -hmm. It was not like today, you know, that we they, they go by plane and come back by plane. You know, they they went on foot or um, at most, you know, they uh, if they were near the sea, you know, they went uh, by ship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so th those people who went wanted to went to go to the Hajj, Hajj pilgrimage, uh, they asked forgiveness from everybody <laughs> because you know they thought that you know, they wouldn't come back. Right, so, right. Uh, well, that that I found really very fit, you know, for my translation. So I said, Halali Yatalebi, which means, you know, asking forgiveness from other people. Huh. So uh, that was the only thing, you know, I could do with Ceremony of Innocence, uh, Rob. <laughs> not, not, couldn't, couldn't do anything else. 
That's yeah. interesting. How did how did your readers um, how did people respond to that that um, yeah they, 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 yeah they, they they liked it so, yes okay yeah, the, they so it, it resonated with yeah. the, the culture and that's right. that kind of... and then well and then I have said you know this halal Talabi is victimized I see huh in in the yeah it's interesting so. What what about the what about the most famous lines in the first stanza? The best lack all conviction. Best, oh, oh, all that's that, oh, that's one of my favorites. It's so <laughs> wonderful. So, okay, yeah. It's well, quoted yeah, everywhere for, these days. Yeah, I know. Hardly a day yeah, goes right. by and you don't see it in the. Yeah, that's paper. right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, now um, for the best, uh, I chose something in Farsi, uh, which is called Khojaste. Of course, the. Uh, the singular is Khojasta uh, and the plural is Khojastagan. Now you can pronounce Khe sound. Hmm. You can pronounce Khe sound, you see? Hmm. But in Spanish, you know, they do have, you know, this Khe sound. For example, in uh, that uh, Don, Don Quixote, mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Don Quixote, but you can't pronounce it. You, you say Don Quixote. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, well, well, we do have, but in Farsi, you know, that sound. Now Khojaste means the son of Wilborn, one meaning of it. Okay. Son of Wellborn, like uh, Eugenides. Yeah. Or another meaning is the blessed. Uh -huh. The blessed uh -huh. one. I so see. for the for Khojastagon, since it, it is uh, plural, you know, I made the, 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 the blessed. And for the worst, I uh, uh, I chose the opposite of Khojastagon, which is uh, just with the uh, change of uh, the first uh, the first uh, letter, Khojastagon. So I did, you know, uh, uh, the, the best and worst with Khojastagon and Khojastagon. I see. So, the, so that so these two words are very similar. Would just be um... very similar with uh, yeah. And the sound and the sound this, uh, the, the, the the phonic the phonic effect and phonic sound is the same again. Mm -hmm. Because you know, so in English it, would, it would, might be something like in English would be the blessed and the unblessed or something exactly, like that. Exactly. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So you see, see, you see the sound Khojastagon, Gojastagon. You know, this is exactly the same. You know, sound but, the same with. And so that enabled you to create that phonic. Yes. C sound, C sound, T sound. Do you yeah. see? Yeah. And then to and then to he as a to call that no uh, lack all conviction uh -huh. to he again. You know, T sound a to call again T sound. Then Gojastagon. Uh, Sarshar, she sound again, she sound, shuro sharar again, she, she sound. So I somehow challenged, you know, with the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, those two lines, you know, by uh, 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 putting emphasis on she sound and she sound and te sound. Mm -hmm. first. Oh, that's, that's nice. Uh, okay. So, yeah. And okay. so, in uh, you know, for me, you know, it's, uh, uh, I consider it as one of my actually. Uh, uh, Best translations. Oh, that's great! Wait, among all so, those novels, so, you're translating so, so many, yeah, so, so many complicated and, novels, and just getting translating those two oh, lines. Thank you. I imagine. Yeah, no, that, that's one of my achievements, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. I, yeah. Well, that's great. I, I imagine it was really rewarding doing that, and very challenging. So, another thing that, as I was, as I was sort of thinking about our, our the conversation we'd had, we're having. I, um, I was looking through the second stanza, and that so many. Uh, striking images in there, and yeah. I'm imagine I'm, I'm wondering what you did with the imagery and the ways that you're because it's it's a the second stanza creates this sort of um, nightmare yeah, dream. yeah, dream like dream -like, quality to I'm it. Dream, I'm dream like quality. Now before that, uh, let me tell you you know what I did for uh, with some other uh, lines in the first stanza. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, for example, for that things fall apart. Again, when I wanted to translate it literally, it didn't, it didn't mean anything. So I uh, chose uh, something from Hamlet, time is out of joint. So I said universe, so I said universe is out of joint for things mm -hmm. all apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for central, center cannot hold, I said uh, 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 center uh, does not uh, constitute itself mm -hmm. or has lost its foundation. Then for mere anarchy is uh, loose, I said, uh, anarchy has loosed its paws upon the world. And especially, yeah, and especially I uh, chose this pause because uh, somewhere I had read that anarchy, uh, the arc of anarchy, arche or archi, or as we say in Farsi, arche is Greek and means uh, uh, actually uh, head. 
I see. And yeah, and an means without head. Without head. And so yeah. it's it, uh, yeah. So it refers to some kind of you know uh, 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 a headless monster which mm -hmm. gives way to 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 that uh, sphinx you know in the second stanza. I see. Okay, that's nice. That, okay. Yeah, that is why, you know, I, I chose pause instead of mm -hmm. saying it, it's loose upon the world. I said it's loose, it's pause upon the world. I see, yeah. Yeah. Uh, were, were there idiom, are there, um, were there any moments where there were um, idioms in Farsi that were rough equivalents? I mean, in English, a phrase like things fall apart is kind of, um, is, is a kind of idiomatic phrase so it, it yeah, has, yeah no, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. the kind of thing you might say in a in a in a situation yeah. that's not that serious but then it also has this in the poem it has this tremendous gravity and that's part of the power of that line yeah that's right yeah uh -huh. well actually you know in farsi when we say gardun as gardun daramade because as i said you know time uh, the universe is out of joint you know that's also you know quite so a, that's a kind of idiomatic yeah, like, I idiomatic see. yeah that's right i see i yeah. see okay good yeah mm -hmm. So what about some of that imagery in the in the second stanza yeah. there? How did yeah. you handle how uh, did you handle that with the weird birds and the and, yeah, the, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. and the sphinx yeah, right. and the <laughs> yeah. Actually, for uh, 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 when it says uh, you know, surely some revelation is at hand. Hmm? Surely the second coming is at hand. Now for uh, uh, revelation. Uh, I said, uh, I translated into English and what I said in Farsi. I said, a sign, a sign or portent is coming out of an invisible Aras veil. An I invisible, I'm sorry, invisible what? In, invisible Aras veil or, or curtain. Oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, uh, well, I said that in order to somehow, you know, give some dreamlike quality to it. I because see. when something you know is something is coming from from out of the out of an in, invisible curtain, you know, it would be some kind of you know, dream dream like quality. I see what you're saying. Okay. But if I said it uh, verbatim, you know, that wouldn't have uh, given you know that dream like quality to it. Was there uh, for that line? What, what, I'm wondering how some of the subtle irony would register there, because in in the poem, there's a sort of some a mockery of those who are mm -hmm. confident in their um in their religious understanding of what will happen so in some ways the poems mocking are notions that we know what will occur in the future and so exactly people right. thinking oh yes surely this is the second coming were you able to register that or i'm not even sure if the yeah. It, yeah, that's, do you, do you see, um, uh, again, I, I think, you know, I, I read somewhere that uh, it was in, again, uh, Harold Bloom, that when he says, you know, when surely is uh, repeated two times or twice, uh, it, it means, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, again, you know, in Farsi, again, when we, when we, when we use that twice, you know, again, you know, that, that would give some kind of uncertainty. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. Okay. And what's some other other uh, lines in there in the second stanza? Some of the images. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see if I. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, Spiritus Mundi. Oh, Spiritus Mundi, Spiritus, of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, what? Well, Spiritus <laughs> Mundi. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's not tangible. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> say, right. yeah. Well, in Farsi, again, you know, uh, we have something which, again, uh, is like that Khojastagan and Khojastagan for the best and worst. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, all of the letters are the same except for one. Mm -hmm. We say Jan Jahan, Jan Jahan, the soul of the world. The soul right? of the world, that makes John sense. Jan Jahan, yeah. The John Jahan, John, you see, is the J, A, N sound. Mm -hmm. And Jahan, again, is J and A and Nissan with an addition of, of, of A, with mm -hmm. an addition of A sound. Mm -hmm. So uh, that gives, you know, somehow uh, uh, that, that, that kind of, you know, uh, uh, quality, you know, that you are looking for. Are there, when, when the, the, the line after that, somewhere in Sands of the Desert, um, yeah, right. Uh -huh. I wonder. This is a, I'm not sure how you can ask this question, but in in 
I imagine in in Iranian culture and and you know more more broadly Middle Eastern culture, desert the desert has a much as a more complex set of associations than maybe in 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 an Irish context where desert is sort of like okay just we conjure up a desert this waste of sand and that's it and i imagine mm-hmm. in, in in your culture deserts are, are very different have, have all sorts of different um associations so i wondered how, how you maybe accounted for that or did you account for that or or how did you well, think actually about we just we just said we just say wilderness <laughs> or wilderness. the desert i see yeah, wilderness I see. or desert yeah sure I see. That's interesting. So wilderness would rather would would give a better sense than that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay. Cool. That's great. Um, and then what about the uh, what about the Sphinx? <laughs> How did you handle that one? Did you just go with the? Did you vote with the Sphinx, the Egyptian Sphinx, directly, or did you do it sort of indirectly? Yeah. Right. You know when uh, actually when we say uh, with the. Uh, uh, body of man and the and the and the head of a uh, lion Line, you know, yeah. that gives it that, that well that gives the image of, of the sphinx the lion's body, body and the head of a man yeah, yeah that's yeah. right yeah that, okay. that, yeah that's gives that gives the image i would have that had the same the sense, kind of, of, of association yeah and actually you know uh, that friend of mine you know who looked for me for a uh, ceremony of innocence has written an analysis you know uh, after you know my communities uh publishing this magazine okay yes yeah. and uh in this magazine, you have uh, to see you know, the sky. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, mine is here, you know, these two parts of the uh, translation to cool. Great. stanzas. And then from here up to here is the analysis of the analysis. poem. So uh, he has explained so many things, you know, for the, oh, for the readers. Good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the diagrams of the of yeah, the, the yeah sure for, of the guy of the, the, the guy yeah yeah that's right yeah <laughs> so well let's we should wrap up a bit here so how I, can you talk let's let's close by talking about the the final lines which are so complicated because and talking with my students about those lines I I think part of the force of the lines mm-hmm. is the the way in which we have a a question and a statement mixed together, sort of prophecy that's also questioning. Um, we have a juxtaposition of certainty. Now I know. Exactly. And, yet no, it ends no, sure. question, and it's such a strange effect yeah, sure. that, the, that those mm-hmm. lines produce. And I guess for you too, there's also the com- complexity, or maybe it's not complexity, of 20 centuries of Stony no. Sleep because of the Christian, specifically Christian context there. Exactly. Um, that's right. So, so what did you what did you do with those those complicated lines? Yeah, you see, um, well, as I said before, uh, of course, as uh, uh, Harold Bloom said, you know, when we say surely, surely, you know, it gives you a kind of you know uh, uh, a sense of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. So the uncertainty is is established at the very uh, outset in the uh, in the second stanza. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at the end, you know, when he questions it, you know, again, you know, you have this uncertainty. But this, that the, the the knowledge now I now I know, as you said, you know, this knowledge of certainty, the this blend of certainty and uncertainty, uh, uh, somehow uh, reminded me of Lida and the Swan mm-hmm. 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 about the about the power and about the power and, and, and knowledge. Yeah, you see? Knowledge, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also it, it brought into my mind, you know, the. Uh, that book by uh, uh, the, the writer of uh, Dover Beach, the uh, Matthew Matthew Arnold. Yeah, Arnold. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, my culture and uh, and anarchy. anarchy. Yeah, Over sure. there, he says that you know we have to accept uncertainty as a, uh, a kind of you know as an mm-hmm. aspect of mm-hmm. a modern society. Mm-hmm. But uh, to me, it seems that in this poem, um, Yeats doesn't want to accept this uncertainty. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want you know to succumb to uh, to power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so the yeah, he wants, work, yeah, he, yeah, he wants you know, actually, yeah. you know, to to emphasize the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, seems to me, yeah, it seems to me like like that. I can I can see that. That's uh, I mean that's I I think that's definitely a, a one one uh, way. To think let me give uh, give you one thing. You know, uh, you say Bethlehem for uh, in the last line when, when it goes, you know, to Bethlehem to be born. Uh, well, you see, again, you know, when we say in in Farsi, we pronounce it as Beit Lahm. It's in Arabic. Beit means house. Lahm means meat. So it says <laughs> the house of meat. 
And again, it is very tangible, you know, for us, you know, to say that, you know, Christ has been born, you know, in Bethlehem. You see. I see, I see. Yeah, see. <laughs> so it is. So Bethlehem is the is the is the is, is the house of meat. <laughs> yeah. I, that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, that's, I think that's a great. I think that's a great way to end. What a what a pleasure this has been uh, to speak with you about um, this translation. I I think it was a, it was a fantastic start because I, I'd like to do this for other for other languages, and so I think you set the set the bar really high for a conversation here. So it's sure, a real, sure, real pleasure. Sure, sure. Yeah, we'll be in touch for, yes, for sure. Because I'm really uh, interested in translating uh, prayer for my daughter. Sailing to Byzantium among the school children, Lida and the Swan, you know, these are all my favorite poems. And especially um, uh, that one, uh, 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 Easter 1916. Easter 1916. The terrible, be the terrible beauty is terrible born. Beauty, that's, that's wonderful. That's complicated. That's one, oh, poems. Yeah, complicated, yeah. but that's one of the poems that, you know, has captured my mind, you know. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, it was a real pleasure. So uh, I hope Thank to you see so you much. again. Take care.